There are hundreds of specialist terms and abbreviations used on the railway. Several relate to personal track safety and it's important that you understand them. You are considered to be in danger from trains if you are on or near the line. This means one of three things. You're standing on a railway line, you're within three meters, ten feet of a line, or you're doing engineering or technical work within 1.25 meters, four feet of a platform edge. To work on or near the line, you must have your valid Sentinel track safety card with you, including an in-date PTS qualification and medical. If you're not on or near the line, but you're within the railway boundary and can be seen from an approaching train, you are said to be on the line side. A position of safety is a place where it's safe to stand when a train is passing. You're in a position of safety if you're at least two meters, that's six feet six inches, from the nearest line on which a train might approach. If the speed limit on this line is no more than 100 miles per hour, this distance can be reduced to 1.25 meters, four feet. On some parts of the railway, the space between the track and the nearest wall, fence or structure is very narrow. These are areas of limited clearance, marked by a red and white checkerboard sign. It means that there is no position of safety on this side of the railway for the length of the structure beyond it. Staff are usually prohibited from these areas unless a line has been blocked. Refuges are sometimes provided in areas of limited clearance to create a safe place to stand when a train is passing. They can be built out over an embankment or cut into a wall. Although most tunnels have refuges, they are very dangerous places and people are not generally allowed in if the lines through them are still open. This sign, no refuges, means that there isn't a position of safety or any refuges on this side of the railway, but there are on the other side. Some signs speak for themselves. Don't go past this sign unless trains have been stopped or it's an emergency situation. There are many telephones dotted around the railway. Most of them go straight through to the controlling signal box. A signal post telephone, known as an SPT, has a white plate with black diagonal lines. Line side phones are usually found near points and are identified by a white plate with a black cross. General railway phones are often provided at level crossings. The sign has either a white or yellow background. Some phones can only be used for emergency calls. Others go through to the electrical control operator, not the signaller. In multi-track areas, some SPTs are located in the space between two lines. Limited clearance phones are identified either by signs on the cabinet itself or alongside the signal head. These phones can only be used in emergency situations. If you have to go on or near the line, make sure you're clear about the dangers at your location and how you're going to stay safe. You'll need to know the approved access point, the speed and direction of trains on each line, and any hazards which might affect your safety, such as an area of limited clearance. This information can be found in the sectional appendix and hazard directory. Advice could also be obtained from your manager or supervisor. Road vehicles can be a serious hazard to trains if they're used near the line without proper care. If you're driving a vehicle, don't allow any part of it to come within two meters, six foot six, of any line on which a train might approach. Switch the hazard warning lights on and in darkness or poor visibility, use dipped headlights. Only turn a vehicle at a suitable turning point and keep the back of it furthest from the line. Make sure that all red lights are off when the vehicle is parked. Errors in communication play a part in the vast majority of railway incidents. In emergency situations, lives could be in danger, so it's vital that your message is fully understood by the other party. That means communicating it clearly 
and accurately. Easington signal box. Start by stating... This is an emergency call. Make sure you're speaking to the right person. Is that the signaller? Tell them who you are, what you do and where you are. This is Richard Grace, track chargeman for Network Rail. I'm behind the up platform at Eccles Station. Describe the problem and its exact location using signal or overhead structure numbers or mileposts. Break numbers down into individual digits and use the phonetic alphabet for letters and difficult words. A car has come down the embankment to Echo Station and is blocking up goods loop 200 yards on the approach to Echo Sierra 104 signal. Tell them what action needs to be taken. I need you to stop trains on the up goods loop, please. Make sure the recipient repeats your message back to confirm they've understood it. Can I repeat that back to you? A car has come down the embankment at Echo Station and it's across the up goods loop 200 yards on the approach to Echo Sierra 104 signal. And you need me to stop trains on the up goods loop? That's correct. When you're speaking to the signaller or electrical control operator, they have responsibility to lead you through the conversation and make sure a clear understanding is reached. They'll tell you what's going to happen next and what they want you to do. Make sure they can contact you again if they need to. My mobile number is 07012670499. When you're making a safety critical call, speak slightly slower than you would normally. Use clear sentences and the standard okay, phrases listed in the Personal Track Safety Handbook. If an incident occurs which requires either the overhead line equipment or conductor rails to be switched off, make an emergency call to the electrical control operator as quickly as possible. Oh, this is an emergency call. Is that the electrical control operator? Tell them the line affected and the precise location. I'm next to structure Echo X-ray Delta. On lines two, with OLE, never approach a casualty who is in contact with live equipment or within one meter of it. Wait until the ECO has arranged an emergency isolation and assured you that the electricity is off. The overhead line is safe to approach but not touch except for the purpose of saving life. Even then, there may be a residual voltage. So before moving the casualty, cover your hands with something dry and non-conductive. Clothing, for example. If an incident occurs which affects the safety of trains, it's vital that immediate action is taken. But don't put yourself in danger. Make an emergency call to the signaller as quickly as possible. If the line has become unsafe for whatever reason, connect a track circuit operating clip between the two running rails if you have one. On many lines, this will turn the previous signal to danger. You then need to walk two kilometers, that's one and a quarter miles in the direction from which the next train is most likely to approach on the affected line. If you arrive at a signal box or railway phone whilst you're walking, speak to the signaller. When you've walked two kilometers, place three detonators on the line 20 meters apart. And to protect yourself from the blast, move so that you're at least 30 meters away. In emergency situations, you can stop a train by giving a hand danger signal. In daylight, hold out a red flag, or if you don't have one, raise both arms above your head. In darkness or poor visibility, use a red light or wave any light vigorously. Do this after placing the three detonators, or if a train approaches whilst you're walking the two kilometers.